So I want to I want to take a couple of minutes. <laughs> Never possible for me to only talk for a couple of minutes. But I want to I want to talk about wallboard. Wow, why am I blurry? I'm I want to talk about wallboard how it's set on a tub. There's a lot of controversy out there as far as where. Um, let me explain something. This is the edge of a tub. The edge. This is the lip of a tub. Edge, lip. Plastic shower pans, which this one has. I don't know, you can't see it. Plastic shower pans have the same thing. They have an edge and they have a lip. So the wall board should always sit on the lip. There are people out there that will tell you and uh, so much misinformation. I've taken out uh, countless um, tub tile. Usually it's a 4x4 ceramic tile that's on a tub. Um, they've set it on the edge of the tub and over the years um, the homeowner doesn't do proper caulking and stuff like that. The wallboard sitting on top of the edge of the tub wicks up water. It ruins the wallboard all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And eventually you could literally just put your hand through the tile. Like I could just bang it. In fact, I have one video where I literally banged the tile out because I knew the wallboard was weak. So I'm going to go through pretty succinctly trying to explain um, a lot of the reasons. I'm going to go through quite a few videos, so bear with me and I'll get back to the previous one. This is a video I posted some years ago. This is a very typical example of a builder's grade tile with sheetrock embedded into the edge of the tub. Water wicks up into the edge of the tub, gets into the sheetrock, and it is destroyed, ruined beyond repair. Usually takes anywhere from 5, 10, 15 years for that to occur, but it will occur. There's no caulking that's going to stop water penetration because the caulking is going to get old and mildewy, and you'll see that on the next video. Uh, that's going to be your indication that mold and mildew has permeated that area, will never go away and then your tile and your wallboard behind it gets weak and falls apart as you're seeing here. Could that have been prevented? Absolutely. See that quarter, about three quarters of an inch um, lip onto the top of that, had they set the wallboard on the lip rather than the edge, it would have negated a lot of this damage. Had they set it slightly above the lip, it would have ensured that no water would have gotten back there and would have just fallen off the lip there and gone down into the tub. Here's another example. This is very typical of what I get. Why is there mold and mildew growing around here? You'll bleach it out. It'll grow back a week or a month later and you'll continue to have the same problem because it's always going to have food um, to eat on and yeah. In this case they actually did a little little something better. See all that mold and mildew? It'll always be there. Um, they actually set the wall board, although it is sheetrock, slightly above, not far enough. I think they set about a quarter of an inch above the lip of, or the edge of the tub. They didn't set it high enough is why this started rotting and deteriorating so badly. Um, had they set it again above the lip of the tub, because the lip is about three quarters of an inch, so had they set it maybe about a quarter inch past that, um, the lip of the tub, see not the edge where we're at now, but the lip, then they would have had a better outcome. Or they could have used um, a waterproofer, but a builder is not going to do that. Would a cement backer board have negated this damage? Possibly, but the damage still would have occurred to the backer board regardless. It would have had black mold and mildew because I pulled it out, both on hardy backer and durarock mold and mildew will grow on cement products so you're not going to have the damage to this extent obviously but you're definitely going to have some damage regardless and despite that you used a better backer board unless it's foam and you're going to see that coming up here in a few seconds above the top tub lip or you put it over the tub lip now I'm going to tell you that you never I want to put the board like this on the tub lip. The board is supposed to sit on the tub lip. 
like this. Not like this, but like this. So if you're using Cody board or if you're using Duroc or some other cement board, you're gonna sit the board on the tub deck. You're gonna leave a little gap and then you're gonna seal that uh, with your preferred treatment for sealing it. If you put it like this, you're creating a weak point here because you've got different materials that expand at different rates of expansion and contraction. So you can actually get a crack in the, in the tile here if you're not careful. So you wanna sit your board on the tub deck. The struggle is real, folks. This is what I'm combating. I have to combat people who are book soldiers, who read too many books and just believe everything they read from the get-go. I base everything I do off of life experience, off of tearing things out. That's how I find out thing, how things fail. And I have video proof. He had mentioned about the backer board and the tub having different movement and possibly cracking a tile. It's never, ever, ever happened. And he has no video evidence to back that up. It's just something he's espousing because a book says it. So therefore he's going to um, try and, I guess, I don't know, scare you into believing that he's right. When in reality, um, when I take tile out, which I've been doing for a long, long time, um, I find the damages and I mitigate those damages. And I've, if there was a better way, I would have found it by now. So what I'm telling you if you're going to look at that you got a shim all these boards are you kidding me all the studs would have to be shimmed in order to do what he's purporting is the correct way which it's really not um, and I've just showed that damage and I'm going to show later on some other people on YouTube who um, who basically are doing the same thing that I'm doing um, oh there's there's the rules that you have to abide by you see that? He even showed, there's his evidence. Pictures and words, <laughs> rather than experience. So all I'm basically saying is that I base everything that I do off of experience. And experience has taught me that this, what he's doing there, right there on the and edge the of the tub is the incorrect uh, way. For but me here's another will guy. will be to uh, clean the edge of the tub here. And what I'm going to do I'm going to apply 100% silicone uh, in the uh, gap where the towel board meets the tub. This is tiny bitty gap, tiny bitty space, but I'm going to fill that with a silicone and it will nicely seal it to the point uh, where there's no any gap. So this is going to be done around the top. Okay, so I'm ready to apply the, the silicone in our transition. So what I'm going to do, this gap I, I will fill with the silicone as well. But now I'm pretty much filling the gap that we have. Good. I'm filling the gap that we have. So Michael Tile Master GA, very very bright um, guy, and he has done basically what I do, except he's gone above a little bit. He's actually setting his wall board, as I mentioned earlier, above the lip, and then filling in that gap with caulking. Um, I don't have a need to fill in that gap because, again, my tile is going to overlap. Three quarter to mm, about 80% of my tile is touching the surface of the board, um, and only the last, you know, maybe 10 or 15% of the tile, whatever tile I'm using, is um, overlapping onto that uh, lip and onto the edge. Therefore, I just find that the caulking is a little bit redundant, probably not needed. But also to the point of the last video that I showed, when you have two separate surfaces, and the bottom surface is not attached to anything as it wouldn't be in my application 
then there is no movement transfer from one to the other. It's impossible. Michael is mitigating that possibility by using the caulking and, of course, water getting back up to the lip, which is basically impossible to do anyway. Okay, so we've talked a little briefly about our system here for the shower, how we got a built-in bench. But let's talk about our finishing, because this is what I would consider to be a superior waterproofing system, shower installation, than a lot of others. And I know we've got some flack on the channel before because we've used drywall with waterproofing systems. And yes, there are some areas in North America where it's building code that you have to use cement fiberboard. So we thought we'd do this video with the cement board just to demonstrate the differences. We've used Schluter, we've used regular drywall, we've used a Schluter membrane, the Curdy board, we've used Red Guard, we've used Aqua Defense on drywall, now we're using it on cement board. Every one of these systems is a little bit different, has different pros and cons, including cost and availability. So, I mean, there's a lot of options out there. And there's no such thing as one right way to do it. There's just a whole lot of different right ways to do it according to what's best for you. <laughs> so here's a question I get all the time. Basically, it's the understanding of how do these assemblies go together. You'll see that this is a shower pan and it has what we call an integrated tile flange, okay? This, this rising piece here is part of the continuous part of the pour of the shower pan and it goes right up against the framework of the space. It's exactly the same as the tub. A tub has an integrated tile flange as well. So whether it's 16 inches high, 20 inches high, or two inches high, they all operate exactly the same. The base gets put up against the framework, and then your substrate, whether it's cement or drywall or curdy board or weedy board, whatever you're using, comes and sits on top of this. The secret here is it doesn't matter if it sits directly on top of it, and in most cases I suggest leave a space, because these products have a tendency to flex around when you're walking in them or sitting in them if you're tub. What you do is you just take your mesh tape or your curdy bands, that orange tape that comes with the curdy schluter system, and you tape the gap. It almost seems ridiculous when you think about it, but it's so effective. Okay. We're going to put our quick set cement over top of all of this just to fill it up. It's kind of like doing drywall when we use our our um, our 20 minute mix in all of our gaps and cracks before we tape. Similar kind of concept. Here we're going to be filling that gap with cement. Then we're going to be applying our membrane which would then get painted from this point all the way up the wall. So there is no way for the water to get in behind any of these substrates or in between any of these cracks once you're finished that way. And that is how you complete your assembly so that you have a complete water diversion system all the way through your shower right to your drain. There's no way that caulking alone is ever going to protect this wall board. Um, water is going to jump over here and when it jumps on to the edge of the tub, the edge of the tub where your wall board is sitting, demonstrate a lot better. When you set your wall board on the edge of the tub, there's no way that you that a bead of caulking in here after your tile is going to stop water from hitting that board. There's, it's just impossible to do. There are some people also that advocate having a gap there and then filling in that gap with caulking. Again, caulking is not impervious to water. Water can still jump up that bead of caulking. If you're going to have anything, leave that gap there. If, if you, for whatever reason, decide that you want it on the edge of the tub instead of the lip, then leave that gap there. I wouldn't suggest putting caulking inside there. That's just me. I mean, you can do it any way you want to if it makes sense to you, but water moisture is still going to find its way to the edge of the wallboard and it doesn't matter what wallboard it is true enough if you use a sheetrock material or even this material which has um, uh, mold and mildew you know, impregnators into it built into it um, that it can get soft and squishy and yet you can put your hand through it as opposed to dur rock or hardy back or something like that where you can't put your hand through it but it still wicks up water and you're still getting mold and mildew this isn't something i'm guessing this is something i know when i've taken out hardy backer and stuff like that i look at the back i've got black mold everywhere sometimes on a shower 18 19 20 inches up whether or not it's innocuous because it's behind the backer really doesn't matter the point is that you still have black mold and mildew because of this simple idiotic thing that I see people do time and time and again. Builders typically will do this, right? So even if you're flush, even if the tub lip is flush with the wall board, you can still set it on top of the lip. You can still do that. You can still have this three-quarter inch gap. 
even if you had a, a 3 by 6 tile, most of that 3 inches is going to be hitting your wallboard anyway. So there's no harm, no foul. You're separating any type of expansion and contraction from your tub to your wallboard anyway, so that's a, that's a benefit as well. Um, so, uh, anyway, I get frustrated because you know, sometimes people don't use their, their brain to figure stuff out. And, you know, it's not a matter of just using my brain. Like I said, you know, 22 years going up this summer, 22 years of doing this stuff, and then a prior, you know, eight years in the apartment business, I know what I'm talking about. I see this constantly all the time. And the only way to mitigate that is to have your wallboard on the lip of the tub. Even if you're over here, you're a little bit away from the lip of the tub, or even over here, you're a little bit away. You can shim out a little bit over there, and then you can still set flush on the lip of the tub. And this is a little less flush, but it doesn't matter. You're still on the lip of the tub, and you can still bump this out and shim it out. And then your tile overlaps that. Very, very easy. Mm, you would think a brainless type of situation going on here, but it, it's not true. I, <laughs> I have to reiterate over and over and over. So, getting back to why I'm making this video specifically is not just to rag out other people, which it seems like I always tend to do because a lot of people don't use common sense. This manufacturer of this tub was, is very bright. They already know what I already know. They know that full well that there's no caulking up under here that's going to stop uh, mold and mildew from hitting your wallboard no matter what it is. They're aware of that. I don't even know the tub manufacturer. If I ever find out, I'll put it in the comment section or I'll put it in the description so that you'll know what kind of tub this is. I have never really, if I have seen this, I have ignored it for whatever reason. I don't know why I would ignore it, but look at this. They have about a three quarter inch lip already, an edge here, so that any water that gets on the surface of the tub is just gonna kind of roll off anyway, right? That's just genius, I love that. That's so smart. And so now you can actually set this on the edge, not have to worry about setting it on the lip. Because water is going to get up there. Will water, can water splash up there? Yeah, but look at this. By the time you put your tile and all that stuff, you have a rounded edge here. Water naturally wants to come off this rounded edge. It's not a square edge. So they were very, very smart. I like this a lot. Uh, you may have even noticed that already when I started talking. I just... I just think that's genius. Like, they knew this, so now I can set my wallboard on this tub right on the edge and, and have no compunction about doing so. My tile is gonna go a little bit past this grout line, this old caulking line. It's gonna go a little bit past that, so it's gonna be literally setting right as it turns here and the water's just gonna shed right off of there. And so, um, yeah, I could still set it on the lip of the tub if I wanted to. Um, there's really no harm, no foul in doing that either. Because you're only coming back the thickness of this, which is about an eighth of an inch. Um, so it wouldn't really take up that much room anyway. But anyway, I just, I kind of wanted to make that clear. Again, I have done many, many, going back, you know, plus 30 years of fixing stuff like this, especially in the apartment industry where nobody ever calls in a work order until it's past too late. Until literally, usually this is where your tub faucet is at in a typical apartment. And the old valves had seats and washers and packing that would squirt out within and from without. And they would never call the work order in. And then, you know, years later, they'll move out and then just all the tile is all mashed up and everything. And then we have to do little patches. If you're ever in an apartment, you might notice a patch of discolored tile. This tile doesn't match all the field tile. And that's the reason why they've done patch jobs before. I've done them over and over and over again in the apartment business. And I've done it in, this, in, in my current line of work as well. Um, and so um, what you'll typically see, not to rant on and on and on, what you'll typically see without this built-in little um, edge here that I love, um, what you'll typically see is you'll see people put wallboard on top of the edge of the tub and, rather than the lip. Then they'll put their tile on, then they'll do a bead of caulking, and then years later, years and years later, could be five years, ten years down the road, you'll see all this black mold and mildew emanating from within the caulking. And the black mold and mildew, they'll bleach out, and it'll disappear for a while, and then in a week or two, it'll come back again, over and over and over and over. There's no way to stop that, because you've added food for mold and mildew to continue to grow. 
and no matter what caulking you use it's not trust me on this <laughs> it's not going to be impenetrable to the moisture and that's going to happen over and over and over so if you have a tub that gets mold and mildew on the edge of this tub 100 percent 101 percent guaranteed the reason you're getting that mold and mildew is because they've done this on a regular tub they set it on the edge and not the lip set it on the lip not the edge you do what you want <laughs> you follow instructions of people that you trust better I'm just I'm basing I'm telling you what I know by experience and so disregard if you like hey if you enjoyed that video and you learned something consider being a patreon member five ten fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos I make nothing up from YouTube at all if you're gonna call me for advice please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes my link to my PayPal and my patreon account is down below and if you haven't already Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.